What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the Samsung built Infuse 4G for AT&T Wireless. Let's go ahead and see if this guy deserves a giant place in your pocket. Alright, so before we get to the review, let me remind you about the specs of this guy and it is packing quite a punch. First and foremost, is its giant 4.5 inch, and that's 4.5, not 4.3, Super AMOLED Plus display with a resolution of 480 by 800. It's being powered by a new generation, or second generation if you will, 1.2 gigahertz Hummingbird processor. It is a 4G phone, and that's AT&T's HSPA Plus variety. This is the first Cat 14 device, which can get you a maximum speed of 21 megabits per second down. Uh, it's got HSUPA support, that's CAT6, so you should get pretty fast uploads. It on the back is rocking an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. You can shoot video at 720p. That's not the only camera. The front is going to give you a 1.3 megapixel shooter. It's got an FM radio, and this big guy is rocking a 1750 milliamp hour battery. It's got Android 2.2 with TouchWiz below the hood. All right, so now let's get into the review. Doesn't matter what the specs are, it doesn't matter how big or little a phone is, it's not gonna make good phone calls, it's not gonna be much use to you. So when I review phones, I do a 20 call test throughout my area of Southern California. Now these results may vary, obviously, depending on your service area, uh, but they are representative at least of the Southern California location. Uh, call quality was a little bit on the tinny side uh, about a quarter of the time. Uh, when I was making phone calls, people were able to tell that I was on a cell phone. They said it was okay and they could hear me fine, but it didn't sound as crystal clear uh, as other phones have, and that only happened about a quarter of the time. During that 20 call test, I had no drop calls. As a very strong antenna, actually, I was able to pull in a pretty solid HSPA Plus support, you can see right there, uh, wherever I was. And generally, other HSPA Plus phones I've had able to get maybe three or four bars, sometimes two, this one was able to pull in a very strong signal, which also is going to lead you to believe that if you're in a fringe 3G area, or if you don't get the best service in your home, uh, you might be able to pull in one or two bars, at least to make phone calls, uh, if you're in not the best service area. Uh, so, nice antenna. Uh, speakerphone was actually pretty decent. I'll give you guys a quick demonstration here. Speakerphone is really important to me. I figure it might be important to you guys as well. So I'll just do a quick 611 call. Let me go ahead and cover this up because people's phone numbers like to pop up. There we go. Uh, we'll go 614. That's not going to work. But at least you'll hear Your something. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. All right. Speakerphone was really loud. Um, quite nice and comes out through those two little speaker grills down there. Uh, so if you are a speakerphone user, if you want to use this for conference calls or even while driving, which I don't recommend, uh, this is going to give you nice, nice uh, sound. Uh, so now let's talk about the hardware. When you look at this thing, it's a big phone. It's a big phone because of the screen, certainly not because of its girth, <laughs> which is always a funny word. Uh, it's got a 4.5 inch screen and you think that's going to be giant, uh, but really it comes out to being a, a very nice size and feels good in the hand. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. The screen here though is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Samsung's new Super AMOLED Plus display addresses all the concerns that I had with the AMOLED screens in Super AMOLED, namely you got a bit of grayish blue tint, um, but keeps all the awesome things. So you're going to get great visibility in direct sunlight. You're going to get rich colors, you're going to get dark blacks, uh, and text is going to look awesome, but I should probably just show you what that looks like instead of talking about it. So I'll go to a screen here. Let's go ahead and jump in and show some of the wallpapers so you can see what images look like. We'll go ahead and check out the wallpaper gallery. You can see I've got Launcher Pro on here, one of my favorites. Text and images here just look absolutely beautiful and really pop. Uh, if you're looking for a phone to show pictures to your friends or show them who, for uh, whoever, this is going to be a fantastic device for you. I mean, you're getting almost tablet size in a phone, 4.5 inches uh, is really huge. So maybe not tablet size, but you're getting a really big phone uh, with a great screen. So let me show you what text looks like on here, and we'll talk about the browser in a minute. Here we are in Techno Buffalo. Text is very, very crisp. Uh, you see you don't have that sort of color tint in the back, especially on a white background. So this is one of the few phones I'd say you actually could read an ebook on uh, without killing your eyes just because it's so much bigger. 
Uh, so the screen is pretty high on the awesome scale. Uh, the next thing that's going to be important is speed. So you're not going to set the world on fire with your stock ROM quadrant scores. Uh, I love to benchmark things. I generally got a score of around 1100. It is only a single core processor, and I say only, uh, it's a 1.2 gigahertz processor in here, and it's very, very, very fast. Uh, I will say this thing just felt really, really zippy while I was using it. Uh, applications loaded really fast. I had no problem, you know, watching games. I had no problem multitasking. This is a very, very, very quick phone. Uh, I didn't have any issue or miss an extra core. This is gonna be a very fast device for you uh, throughout the duration of your two-year contract. Uh, that's the way you choose to go. Uh, but that's not the only way that speed is going to matter. This is also an HS, uh, technically HSDPA, the first Cat 14, which is really capable of supposedly super fast speed. So I mentioned that I'm kind of a benchmarking junkie. So let me go ahead and show you how fast this is. I'm gonna go ahead and launch speed test. And let's go ahead and restart the test. And I've got pretty nice HSPA plus signal here. And let's see how fast we're gonna be if we can come anywhere close to their max 21 um, megabits per second. Now, AT&T hasn't been that forthcoming about where their uh, HSPA plus 4G network is. Uh, so speeds are definitely going to vary. Again, this is only representative of where I am in Southern California. So 2.99 is about what I've been getting in the low three areas. Uh, and generally I've been getting a little bit higher than one megabit per second up. So you are getting kind of fast speeds, uh, but certainly not, at least where I am again, uh, as fast as uh, you would hope. So you can go ahead and let's check out some results. You can see some previous speeds here. So generally in the three is what I've been getting. Uh, my upload speeds um, definitely tended to uh, vary a lot. Uh, this is going to be a, just, a, just a generally quick device. Let's go ahead and load a web page here. So here we are on Techno Buffalo. I uh, notice that I've got flash turned off. Even with flash content turned on, uh, pinch to zooming, whatever you wanted to do, really just worked very quickly. Uh, overall, the device just felt fast. So let's go ahead and just go. Uh, we'll do a refresh. We're not connected here over Wi-Fi at all. This is straight, I guess you could call it, uh, 4G service or HSPA+. So there it goes, content is loaded. You can read it, images are now showing up. You can see where flash content is. I've got it set to um, ask me essentially if I want to use any plugins. So there we are. Uh, this is only Android 2.2, and I say only because it's a bit disappointing. I certainly would have liked to have had Froyo, uh, but it doesn't really make that giant of a difference, uh, at least to me. Uh, the phone just worked very well, and Samsung's own widgets and their TouchWiz uh, tended to make up a little bit uh, for the stuff that I was missing in Gingerbread. I like their default application manager. Uh, you'll notice that I had Launcher Pro on there. I'm not the biggest fan of the look of TouchWiz, the way it encapsulates, I can tap the screen, uh, the way it encapsulates icons like this. Um, some would say kind of Apple-like. I think Apple would certainly uh, say that. So using uh, third-party launchers is a way to uh, eliminate that. It's one of the great things about Android. You can customize the heck out of the device. So I didn't mind that I had Froyo that much. I would have liked that if, you know, just to have uh, the latest build of gingerbread, but supposedly that will be coming. So with a phone this big uh, and a phone this thin, my first question was, how is battery life going to be? Uh, and this 1,750 milliamp hour battery, it's a big battery, actually was able to get me through a full day really easily. Uh, and that's with checking two accounts uh, connected to exchange servers, uh, a lot of phone calls, huge amount of web browsing. This thing really got through a full day of heavy use with about almost 40% of the battery left, so you could technically probably get through two days if you used it uh, judiciously. I was really, really impressed, uh, and especially powering a phone this big with a screen this massive. Uh, really kudos to Samsung for giving it the battery life that it deserved. Camera quality was fine. As I generally say in phone reviews, you're not gonna replace your DSLR. But if you want to snap a few pictures of your buddies at the club, uh, you know, this will be fine. Uh, so if I was an AT&T customer, which I do happen to be, uh, and I was looking for a phone, I can definitely tell you that this would be the phone that I would get. Uh, I can't recommend this phone enough. Uh, certainly it would have been great if it had dual cores. It would have been awesome if it had gingerbread. But those are really minor quibbles of what's a very, very amazing phone. Uh, if you are an Android user, or even if you're not an Android user, you've just heard about Android and you want to get into the smartphone world, this is going to be a wonderful way 
to go in and try it. Whether you're a hardcore hacker and you want to tweak the ROM and sideload applications, whether or not you're a novice user, you just want a phone that's going to work, this phone is going to work very, very, very nicely. So I know a lot of people have been making some fuss about how Samsung does their file management. I didn't have any slowdown issues when I was using the phone, uh, and I wouldn't expect that you would have um, that much either, but that is something to keep in mind. Sort of the short, non-nerdy definition uh, is the way Samsung does their file storage. You could have, potentially at least, uh, have a bit of slowdown, but I didn't experience that, and I haven't experienced that with any of my Samsung devices that I've tested. Uh, this phone gets definitely uh, a two thumbs up. Those are my thumbs. This is one that, again, I would really, really recommend to anyone out there looking for a smartphone. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Uh, be sure to check out the site for all your tech news. This has been a full review of the AT&T Infuse 4G, and you should infuse some love onto this guy because it definitely deserves it. I'll see you in the next video.